Welcome to The Breakdown. I'm Kieran. I'm joined by Taddy. And we will be going into the Australian World Cup selection, the Scotland-France game and the England-Wales game. We're going to unpack all of it in a 15-minute video for you. Yeah, 100%, Kieran. I think for me, looking at that Australian team, the biggest omissions are a Michael Hooper, a Quade Cooper and Reese Hodge, who I'm looking at and I'm saying, like, with a young team, with someone like a Carter Gordon being the standalone 10, Australia needed more experience in that team. And obviously they're going with uh, Will Skelton, who's never captained the Wallaby team. But what is your thoughts on the Australian team? It's, it's, surprising. it's surprising to me, if I'm honest. I think Quade Cooper not being there is a massive, massive problem. I don't know what you think, but I just think he, he came back into this Australian squad, had a high hope, high expectation, and then he's just been released. It just seems a bit of a waste of an experimental time with Eddie Jones. But what I, I am thinking is Eddie Jones has gone out with the impression that if something doesn't work, he needs to change fast. I think he learned that with England. I don't know what you think, though. This is the thing I'm struggling with in the sense that, like, so you 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 try, Quay Cooper's trial and never, right? You have Carter Gordon. Carter Gordon's 22, 21, right? He's not played not a lot of international rugby. If you're going to go with Carter Gordon with, with your temper 2023, you should have just given him all the games of the rugby championship. Carter Gordon's now got, I think, a game against, I'm not sure if they're playing Ireland, but they got France, their last game, right? He's got, I think, two, three more games to be World Cup ready. For me, that's a massive, massive, massive blunder by Eddie. And no Michael Hooper, their captain, they're almost that Pocock figure in the team. For me, it's now concerning. People talking about, can Australia shock the world and go to the final? But as an England fan, are you now more hopeful? Yeah, you know what? We can beat Australia looking at their team. 100%. I think they have a lot of, lot of, you know, I think they have a lot of players that can still the show in Corabetti, for example, and Iketau, players like that. But those are just players. They're not an injury, like they're not a team, if you know what I mean. England have a very good, like a good moral, good team, good cohesion. So I'll be backing ourselves in a, in a, in a quarter final against Australia if that does cook up. But I think it's, it's interesting. This squad is, it's, it's a young squad. It's an experienced squad. Um, but I, I hope that Australia can, for rugby's sake, turn up this World Cup and actually actually have some firepower because I think I think it's going to be an, an extra World Cup on that side of the draw if Australia can bring the heat. Exactly. And um, I was just looking on Instagram now because I, I, I was just flicking through looking at the team. Pete Samuel also hasn't been selected for the Wallabies. So, what? yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know. What's your thoughts on that? Pete, <laughs> Pete Samuel has not been picked. He's like the only player in that Australian squad that I'm like, okay, he's coming off the bench. This could like change something. Mm. He is, he's a, he's an athletic freak. I don't understand why he's not been even considered. It's crazy to me. Um, but what, in other words, what do you think of Will Skelton being given the captaincy? I think that's an interesting topic we need to cover. Yeah, for me, it's really like I'm. I don't know. I'm very fifty fifty with it. I think. He's not been in the best form. We know what he can do at club. We know how good he can be, right? But he's definitely a player that leads from the front. And if you're looking at the Australian team right now, I mean, Cards, um, Tate McDermott's been captain. I think Slipper's injured. Um, Alato is injured as well. So who else do you really go with that has that experience in the team, especially with a guy like Reese Hodge injured? You're probably going to... Skelton is the best of a bad bunch, in my opinion. But he needs to find form and he needs to lead from the front. That's what I think. What do you reckon? I don't think Eddie Jones could actually organise a piss up in a brewery. I don't think, honestly, this this whole Will Skelton being the captain, it kind of sums up where Australian Australia rugby are. They're a bit just crazy all over the shop. They haven't got a set structure going into this World Cup, mm -hmm. which I think is going to play into a lot of other teams' hands. Will Skelton, for me, he's an outstanding player. He's obviously done very well in like the European Cups and everything like that. Is he that kind of guy that I would look at in a, in a test match and go... He's a guy I really want to follow. He's the, got the leadership that I think can win a test match. I, I don't know what you think. Let me know. But I, I don't think he has that. No, not at all. I think, I think this is the thing with a captain. I understand a captain isn't necessarily your best player, right? Your captain is your leader. Your captain is a guy that will do something for 80 minutes, but, but the troops will follow him, right? You look at England, that's Owen Farrell. You look at... Um, you look at even Sam Kane. I know I slander him, but he's a leader. He's he's a leadership figure. I don't look get... At pre the look at... Yeah, yeah. Look at are. previous look at look at previous World Cups though, okay? So in twenty nineteen, um it was obviously Sia Khaleesi. In twenty fifteen yeah. is Ritzy McCaw. Those are two players that, you know, that they are the leaders of that team. Everything goes, they lead by example. Will Skelton, 
Does he, yeah. are we going to write his name into the into the sayings and say he's the guy for Australia? I don't know. For me, it's no, but I'm interested. I want to prove me wrong. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I think just to summarize, like Australia's team for this World Cup. I mean, obviously, we need to take take into account like their route to go to the final. They're going to obviously play easier teams. Like, I understand that, but at the same time, South Africa, Ireland, New Zealand, France in the semis. I'm not looking at this team right now, this squad as it is, and saying that they got it at the moment to beat those teams. But then again, with Eddie Jones as host, you just never know. Um, with Eddie Jones as head coach, or you just never know. I would, one thing I'll never do as a rugby fan is ever just disrespect Eddie Jones and count him out. I'll, I'll never do that. What about you? I think I've got to that stage where I can discredit him. I don't. I don't think he has the minerals as a coach anymore to win big trophies. I don't. I, I think it's very um, in the past of what his legacy is. I don't think it's really major that nowadays. But I think it's. I think he's out of touch with modern day rugby. I think he's too involved in the media rather than actually building a solidified team to win a World Cup. And you, you know, he didn't. He didn't manage to do it in England in 2019. So I have no confidence he can do it in in 2023 with a weakened Australia team. But moving mm. on, let's go on to the Scotland versus France this weekend. We have Josh Bayless coming on the podcast, joining us from uh, Scotland camp. We think this could be the, the the game of the weekend. A fully loaded Scotland team and a fully loaded France team going head to head in France. I think it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. It's gonna be interesting to see France with a much, much stronger team than what they had out in Marrowfield. But at the same time, I think Scotland are looking dangerous. I think Scotland now, if they're able to make a statement win this weekend, that that group B now, you can't call it. You won't you won't be able to call it now, especially with the injuries of Pollard and Lacanyoam. If Scotland win on Saturday, as a Bok fan, I'm very, very worried. This is a French team, had unbeaten year, performed well in the Six Nations. If Russell can lead the boys and pull off a shock, man, I- I'm nervous. I'm nervous. What do you reckon, Kieran? I think Scotland are a team that play without fear. That's the dangerous thing about Scotland. They have, they're a fearless team. You know, no one expects anything from them. They think an easy game against Scotland, we've got this in Murrayfield. I think teams underestimate them, but that's the dangerous part of it. I think France, you know, they're going to go into this knowing that Scotland are a very loaded team. They've got Finn Russell, um, Tua Pelotu, Hugh Jones. They're not a team to be messing around with. I think France is going to step on the gas early and not give Scotland an inch in the game because if Scotland turn it into a grudge match, it could go 50-50 in my opinion. A hundred percent. Scotland love it when it's scrappy, but Fr- France, I think, love that sort of elegant, flowy style. And I think the way in which you beat France, right, which you saw against Ireland, you meet them up front. You don't allow them to get that quick ruck speed, which Dupont is so good playing off of. I think Scotland, do do I think they have the players to, to really nullify the French pack? That's a different question. That's a different question. That, that French se- second row combination, Flamont and Wokey, Jesus Christ, it's actually insane in the 9 and 10 combination. Where do you think if Scotland are going to win on Saturday, uh, they're going to win? What's your opinion? I think for me, you meet fire with fire. I think if France has got an insane kicking game, we know full well in the competition now that Scotland kicked the most in the summer series warm-up so mm. far. Yeah, Finn Russell is the reason why Scotland have been on the front foot. So I think you meet fire with fire and you put the pressure on the back three. I think you're trying to make sure that Penno is out the game in terms of ball in hand. I think you ping him and ping him in his corner. I think you give Ramos a hard time with hard spirals. And I think you try and get a field position. You win those small little battles against France. Then you start turning the tide. But I think with France, you give him an inch in the first couple of minutes, three tries, down by 15 minutes, the game's gone. You you might as well try and, you know, yeah. I think this is something me and you both agreed with there. I'm also just allowed to hold the opinion. Watching France growing up, I'm watching them as a rugby team. For me, there's always been this unpredictability about them. In the back of my mind, I know as good as they are, they have this tendency to just slip up and be inconsistent. That's the biggest fear I have about this French team. Looking at the Summer Series now and going into the World Cup, they've got Scotland, they've got Australia in a couple of weeks. I I just have this bad feeling that that, that France can perform well, but then at some point just lose that consistency, lose that form. But what do you think about France? Are you completely 100% sold on them as a team? Would you, uh, I'll ask you a question? Would you would you say that if you if France get past the the group stage, do they have the minerals to win big games? That's the question I'd ask you. But this is why this is why I back South Africa and, and uh, the All Blacks and maybe even Ireland to beat France. I, I and that team, Kieran. I think that the thing that France don't have is experience. 
leaders. Right, as bad as South Africa are, as, as maybe as New Zealand, as much as New Zealand struggled against France last game, they got leader figures, leadership figures. Sam Whitelock, if he wins his World Cup, is winning his third World Cup. See, the Springboks go back to back. Sexton, nearly 40 now, played in several World Cups. So the biggest issue with France for me is, is, is that lack of leadership figures, the lack of leadership figures they have in their team. But yeah, do, do you also agree? I, I agree. I think France are a team that, you know, they, they've they've struggled before with big games. And then they've slowly got out of that, you know, that phase of like losing those games they shouldn't have lost. But mm-hmm. I think with France it's it's exciting. I think it, for me, come this Saturday, they need to get the balls the ball into Penno's hand as quickly as possible, get Ramos fifty twenty two in all day long, and yeah. Dupont needs to just speed yeah. up the game. I think on a dry day it's France's game all day long, unfortunately. Um as I I'm rooting for the underdog to Scotland. I think France will blow out by 20 points max. I think it uh, more than 20 points. I think Scotland are maybe a little bit um, unpredictable. So I, I can't I can't put my hand on what they need to do to beat France. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. I think with France, we won under under 20s championship as well. With 10 minutes to go, they could score three tries. So I don't even think I don't even think it's going to be a case of Scotland playing badly. I just think with France, if you give them an inch, they'll give you a mile. Uh, I see. I see it's France by twenty, but just let's say last fifty minutes of the game. I think Scotland will will surprise people on Saturday with how physical they're going to be, and I think maybe even you know Finn Russell, and that's another person in the Scottish te- Scottish team. I know me and you don't agree on a lot about rugby, right? But one thing we definitely agree on is the unpredictability of Finn Russell. I think that's something we should talk about. Um, but yeah, that's my prediction for the game. What do you think about Finn Russell going inside there? Finn Russell is 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 slowly turning my tide on my opinion on him. He had a class game last weekend against a very beating France. If he can pull it off this weekend, all my things I've been saying about Finn Russell being unpredictable, will, will, I'll take them back happily. I think he has to really solidify a solid performance against this French team, and I think he's he's is in fine form. I'll give him his credit. But until then, for me, he's too unpredictable. He's too. He tries to be over flary. He tries to be too much. And I think we need to see more of that. Just nitty gritty fly half. Take the ball to the line and just do your job. I think Finn Russell, if he can take that out of his game, with the flary too over flary, too many crossfields, trying too many things, he'll be an excellent player. But until then, it, that's my opinion. Yeah, yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, moving on to the next game, you obviously, I'm not going to stop talking about the humbling. <laughs> that England received last week. I'm looking at the Wales team. If I was an England fan, would I be feeling as scared? No, I wouldn't be. But I think England with their Farrells, with their Fords coming in this weekend, with the Atojes that we're going to see, most likely, I think England should convincingly beat this Welsh team at Twickenham. That's what I personally think. But are you nervous playing this Welsh team on Saturday? Yeah, I am. I think uh, I am nervous. I think it's... It's one of those things where, like, you just shouldn't lose to a Welsh team. Any English team should never lose to a Welsh team. And I want to make a message to England rugby and basically say, if you are not slapping Wales this weekend, stop stop bigging anything up you do on social media. Hit the training paddock and work your ass off. Because I don't think England have them, they're the... Let me just cut this out. <laughs> I... The mentality. I think England. Yeah, I think England need that mentality this weekend. I think they've got to go out with pure aggression. I think they've got to go to their set piece. I think they've really got to take it to Wales and be fearless. Stop living in a very feared attack. That's the problem with England. They're in a box. They don't want to be like they don't want to open up the game in terms of they don't back their fitness. They don't back their skill set. So I think they've got to go out, be brave, and you know what? Just let's do, let's humble the Welsh fans because last week. I didn't. I turned my phone off as soon as the game went off. I just didn't want to. I didn't want to answer anything. So let's put these Welsh guys back in their box. I think the biggest thing with me looking into this weekend at Twickenham, there is no, there is no excuses for England losing. I think England need to win by like twenty to ten points. In, Twickenham is a place where tier one nations fear to go because England at Twickenham are a different beast. But looking at looking at the way England played last week. Borthwick, would a system come overnight? Would Borthwick think of something? Will Borthwick change his way of coaching? Will, will England turn into, into this attacking beast we know they should be? Will England be exciting to watch within a week? I don't know, Kieran. This is why I'm really struggling in terms of making... Borthwick, 
Borthwick needs a plan. He's a donut. He needs a plan. Okay, we went into that game at the Principality with no game plan, no structure. It was almost like 15 players that have never played with each other onto a pitch and had no cohesion. Have a set game plan on how you're going to beat Wales. Okay, follow that game plan. Have a plan B if you need to. And don't be scared to attack Wales. Wales aren't a dangerous beast in world rugby anymore. Okay, so just attack them. Be be fearless. But I think with Borthwick, he needs to go with a solid fly half and barrel. I think he's got to have a, an out and out twelve that can get over the game line because he lacked that. And I think in the in the in the in the red zone in the twenty twenty in the twenty two, they have got to be accurate. Okay, the, in the principality said they weren't accurate. They lost possession. They were floppy. And I think it, all honesty, they need to be ruthless. Come that twenty two, they need to leave that that other half with points. That is the biggest end goal. That's, it's just stupid if it don't. For me, the biggest issue, I understand what you're saying about the, the back line, but the biggest issue is England's four pack. And we've seen it all six nations. They come up against a competent French pack and get absolutely just ran through. Looking at Eng- looking at Wales' four pack this weekend, I, I think they're, they're looking very, very strong as well. I think England lack a solid front three. And Kieran, I, I, I love Ellis Genge, as I've always said, but we're starting to see what, like, lacking a lethal front three, a lethal mobile forward pack is doing for Eng- for England now. England don't have that. Like, you remember back in the day, I'll say back in the day, but back in the day, England used to be feared because of their forward pack. Delalio, Martin Johnson, e- even in 2019, Itoje, Mako, but who are you going to be looking to on Saturday to be like, you know what, this guy's going to, you know, almost be like what Jack Morgan was last week for England, uh, for Wales. Who are you looking to? It's a hard watch because last week we went with Genge, Blamire, and Will Stewart. On paper, they're good Prem players, but like, <laughs> it's not going to win a test match. I think I'm looking to that pack. I want to see a Laws return. I want to see a Toje return. I want a Curry. I want a Jack Willis. I want, um, if Billy even a Polo can play, I want him to come back and find some form. I think England, for me, England go out in, in at Twickenham with a fully loaded team like they're going to win the World Cup in a final. And they say, here you go, boys. These are all the tactics, everything you need. These are the players I would select as Borwick to win a World Cup final. You need to now put on the performance that so you're going to win this final. Because I think there's we don't have a select starting team to win a game at the moment. So we need to blow out and have a set team that we can follow, knowing it works going into the World Cup. Yeah, yeah. And I, I completely agree, Kieran. I think the, the, the biggest advantage Gatlin has over both because experience, knowing what to do before World Cups, so and as much as we slandered him throughout the Six Nations, what we don't give him credit for is, is experience. This is a coach that's you know gone to two World Cup semi-finals, Warren Gatlin. So I think I think he's he's gonna always be know how to crack the English code. And I think that's what he did perfectly last week. Wales didn't overplay. Wales did what they needed to do. They kicked at the right time. They carried at the right time. And you look at England in, in a very in, uh, uninspirational 12 and Guy Porter, I think the centre combination for England this weekend is also going to be pivotal. But I'm hoping Ollie Lawrence comes back and provides some go forward. We're going to see Farrell back again, providing some creative in, inspiration. But what do you think England need to do differently this weekend? Or what do you think they will do differently this weekend to win the game? What, what do you see happening? I think, I'll repeat what I said, I think it's accuracy in the 22. And I think they need to apply pressure on Wales for 40, 50, 60 minutes of the game. I think they did it for 20 minutes last week, last weekend. And I think pressure builds. And I think handling errors. I mean, England shot themselves in the foot. Stop the handling errors. Get the line out right. And, you, and everything becomes easier. Everything works a lot easier. Your hands, everything. Everything flows a lot better in the game. So I think for me, England need to be... Um, getting a set piece and handling errors right and their accuracy what do you think what, what's the main factor you need, you would change it's, it's, I think that, I think every every world class team has an amazing back through just the back line mate like I know as much as I the forwards the back line as well I, there was no creativity there was no flair on the wings I mean Max Malins as much as I love to stick up for him he doesn't have what an Arundel has shown he does have Freddie Stewart very good in the in the back three but what does he do going forward? What else does he have to his game apart from his catching? And I think you're looking at a Wales team with Josh Adams returning, Liam Williams. They These are guys that have a spark of creativity that the English players don't have. So that should be also interesting to see, like, what can Wales do? What can, what can Wales do to cause England some pain? OK, I think it's time to drop our predictions for the England-Wales game. I'm, this is a time oh, where this could go horribly wrong in a couple of days. What is your prediction, Paddy? What is, what is the end result? So for me, I'm saying 
England in the England and Twickenham will win by 10 points. 10 to 15 points, I think. I think England and Twickenham don't lose that much. It's a weakened Wales team. England should convincingly win. That's my prediction. And Kieran, I'm going to ask him for you. What's your prediction for this Saturday? I think it's going to be England by less than eight points. Uh, in fact, I'm going to go England less than a try win at Twickenham. I'm going to be there, so I'll be giving you a live reaction. I'll go live. I'll go live on TikTok. Oh, Kieran, a little like a little live from Kieran on TikTok. That'd actually bang, I reckon. And I'll I'll join you as well, and we can we can chat to the fans and stuff. Kieran, imagine if you go to um Twickenham and people start to recognise you. That would actually be jokes. <laughs> If you if you guys watch this and at, at, at Twickenham, I'm sat in the lower tier. Um, come see me, and I'll get a feel of you. That'd actually be amazing. Uh, but guys, we've done this. Has been uh, Kieran and Taddy today. Uh, we've talked about our predictions, our reaction to the Australia World Cup team. Make sure whilst you're here to check out our TikTok, YouTube, Spotify, all of our social media platforms. Where we're so happy to be providing you guys with the best rugby content in the world, from the best rugby podcast in the world. It's been the Breakdown Rugby Podcast, and we'll see you soon. Bye, guys.